How's it going everybody? Driver53 here and today we are going to be taking a look at which one of these production chains is the most profitable. We are going to be taking a look at individual ones and we're going to be taking a look at the ones that require two different stages of productions. For example, the cereal factory, the bakery, and the tailor shop. We're also going to be taking a look at the greenhouses. I've been doing a lot of research on productions here for Farming Simulator 22 and we've put out some how-to videos on the productions also and the data in those is no longer correct. Yes, in patch 1.2, Giants modified some things, and we're going to go over that here today. Now, I'd like to go ahead and apologize. I've got a big spreadsheet that I'm going to be breaking up into smaller groups. There's no easy way for me to break up this information because it's just a lot of data. So I'm going to do my best to show this to you. If it looks a little grainy, I'm sorry. And if the things are really small, I'm sorry also. And if you want to get your own copy of that spreadsheet, we're going to be putting it in the Discord server. We've got a link down in the description below, and it's going to be under the channel FS22 Production Chains. So let's go ahead and jump into this. We're going to be starting right here with the grain mill. In the first column, we have grain mill, and then you can see in the second column, we have wheat, barley, oat, and sorghum. Those are your inputs that you're going to need for your grain mill. In the third column, you can see the average sell price. Now, these prices are set on normal economy, and every price that you see on this is all going to be normal economy, and it's going to be the average price. Are you going to see prices higher than this? Absolutely. Are you going to see prices lower than this? Absolutely. So it's up to you to be able to sell these at the best time. A good rule of thumb is 150% of the price that you're seeing here right now is a really good sell price. Could it be higher than that? Yes, it absolutely can. We've seen some astronomical prices. Also, if you're playing on easy mode, then this is only 60% of what e easy is going to be. And if you're playing on hard mode, then that's only going to be a third of what easy is also. So remember that normal economy right now is 60% of what easy is. That's what these prices are right here. 60% of easy. Next, we've got the input quantity per cycle. So Giants has made some modifications to the way that the recipes look in Farming Simulator 22 now with the patch 1.2. Before on the flower, it was like 150 in on each one of these, and then you had different values coming out. But now they've really reduced these numbers down and it has to do with the number of cycles also. And we're going to take a look at that. So what you can see here that wheat, it's got five, barley is 30, oats is 15, and sorghum is 15. So the next column here is the input value per cycle. So you may be wondering, well, how do you have $3.04? We don't have that in game. So the way that I've got this figured is, let's take wheat for example, okay? Five liters is $3.04 of the average sell price of $607. And the way you could confirm this is you take $3.04, multiply it by 200, and you're gonna get $607. So you can see all the way down, this is everything else. Now you may be thinking, wow, that's a really awesome price on the barley, the oats, and the sorghum. Well, that's how much the value is per the cycle. And that's going to come into play here in a little bit. But next, let's go ahead and look at the output. As you can see, it's flour all the way down. And you can also see that the average sell price for flour is $1,026. Once again, this is average on normal economy. The next column, you can see the output quantity per cycle. So here's where it gets interesting. So before the patch, wheat looked like 150 to 120 was the ratio on the recipe, but now it's five to four. So it got a little bit more simple here. So you could try to figure out it a little bit easier. And once again, the number of cycles is the big key factor into why this got reduced. And it's, it's, it's really awesome what they did here. The next column you see here is the output value per cycle. And this is calculated the exact same way as your input value per cycle. Four liters of your flour is worth $4.10 because your total value of 1,000 liters is $1,026. And if you look all the way down, 23 liters of flour is 2360, 19 liters is 1949, and 16 liters is 1642. And you may be wondering, well, why is that important? Because why do I need to know how much my input value is and my output value? Well, this next column right here is their difference per cycle. And when you look at these, you can see that for the wheat to flour, the difference per cycle is $1.07. So every single cycle, you're going to make $1.07 more. And if we go down to barley, it's $6.71, oats is $5.12, and sorghum is $4.81. Well, that may be like, awesome, I'm going to do everything in barley, because I know that's the highest per cycle. Well, there's a catch, and that's this next column right here. What Giants has done, instead of doing hourly cycles, they're doing cycles per month. Now, why would they do this? 
because all of the productions are always based on a monthly value. Whenever we had it as an hourly value, it was quite complicated to understand if that was per day or per month because some players play on multiple days per month. Now this right here takes it and gives you exactly how many cycles you're going to have. So if you're playing on one day month, you're going to be able to do 3,600 cycles of wheat to flour in that one day. But if you're playing on two days, well, it's only going to be 1,800 cycles per day. And if you're playing three days, it's 1,200 cycles per day. So however many days are in your month, divide the cycles per month by that number of days. This is where it gets really interesting. The difference per cycle of wheat is only $1.07, but you're doing 3,600 cycles a month. And in comparison, your barley is $6.71 difference per cycle, but you're only doing 600 of those per month. So another factor that you need to take into consideration is your production cost per month. It's going to cost you something to run this facility. And as you can see right here, all of these are going to be $24 per month. No longer are we getting charged per hour. It's going to be per month. So every, if you're playing single day seasons every day from midnight to midnight, that's what your production cost is going to be is $24. So now I'm giving you all this data. And you're probably wondering, well, flowers flower, right? They're all going to be the exact same on my profit. That's where this last column comes into play here. This is your average gross profit per month. And why am I saying gross? Because there's so many other factors to take into consideration. This right here is only looking at the plant itself. OK, your, your wheat may cost you more than your barley does to be able to extract out because you're using a different piece of equipment now or you had some other outside costs that affected these things. So this is just looking at the value of your crops and how much it costs you to actually produce those crops in the facility. So as you can see right here, if you're using wheat to make flour on average, it's going to give you three thousand eight hundred and twenty four dollars profit every single month. Barley is going to give you $4,001. Oats is going to give you $6,125. And sorghum is going to give you $5,743. And there is a reason for the difference here in the price. And it's because oats only yields 5,700 liters per hectare. Now that's without any fertilizers or anything like that. But on oats, it's going to be 8,900 liters on nothing done to the field. So there's a quite a big difference on the same amount of ground that you have. So they've gone in here and adjusted the prices. That way they're a little bit more aligned. Just remember that a lot of these crops, if they're a little bit lower, it's because they're a higher yielding crop. And if it's a little bit more expensive, it's because it's a lower yielding crop per hectare. So now that I've showed you guys all the data here on the gray mill, I'm going to go ahead and start showing you all the other data that we have. Now, I'm not going to go through every single one of them just like I did here on the grain mill. I did that to explain to you how this spreadsheet is put together. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and show you the grain mill, the oil mill, the sugar mill, the great processing unit, the spinnery, and the sawmill all here first. We're going to show you the first half, and then I'm just going to scroll across to the end and kind of talk about some highlights as we go. So as you can see, the input quantity here per cycle, every one of these is really, really low, and they've got a very low input value per cycle. But it's all going to make sense whenever you see the cycles per month. I mean, it is absolutely insane. Some of these have 12,000 cycles per month that they are going to be able to do. And I would also like to say that if you guys have been looking at any price charts here for the productions, we did get some updates also to those prices. Your flour has gone up in value. Canola oil, sunflower oil, olive oil has also gone up in value, and your bread has gone up in value. But we're going to look at that here a little bit later. So the ones that really stand out to me right now are the grape processing unit and the sawmill. They take a lot of work to be able to harvest those products, but as you can see, they are worth it. They are both over $9,000 every single month. And this is on average, okay? You're going to be able to potentially get 150% of this value. So imagine you can add about another $4,500 onto this. So you're going to be seeing somewhere around 13, maybe even $14,000 that you could get per month if you sell everything at the right time. All right, so the next three that I want to show you here are going to be the greenhouses. This is the small, medium, and the large. And as we go across, you can see that my water, I have the average sell price as zero because on Elm Creek, you can get free water. So if you have to pay for your water, these final prices are going to come down a little bit. But I know on Elm Creek, you can get free water. So that's why you put it in there. 
And as we get over here to the cycles per month, you can see that it's quite different between your small, medium, and large. I mean, you've got 384 cycles on a small, you've got 672 cycles on the medium, and you've got 1,536 cycles on the large greenhouse. So it's really interesting that each one pretty much doubles what the other one does. The profit, you can see there's not a lot of profit here in the small greenhouse. I really feel like you're going to have to have a lot of these put on the ground to be able to actually make some money on these, to make it worth, you know, even having the equipment to be able to haul all of these pallets around. I mean, even your large greenhouse there, you're looking at $1,300, maybe $1,400. You know, if you do 150% of that, that's going to be what? Like another six, $700 on top of that. So maybe $2,000 a month is all you're going to get out of your large greenhouse. Now, absolutely, you can be running all three of these at the same time. And as long as you're on top of it and you get your pallets out of the way, then you could potentially have, you know, almost $4,000 right here per month. But if you run these as a single, that's all you're going to be getting. So I recommend that if you really want to make some money on these, you're going to need to run multiple fruits or vegetables out of your greenhouse. And the last group that we're looking at right here, this is going to be your cereal factory, your dairy, your carpentry, your bakery, and your tailor shop. So these are ones that are going to require some other production facilities to be able to produce the things in these recipes right here, except for the dairy. The dairy, you can do milk and you can make butter or cheese by itself, but if you want to make chocolate, you are going to need the sugar. That's why that one's in here. And also your carpentry here, you can take your wood and turn it directly into furniture or wood chips, so you don't need it. But if you want to make everything out of planks, which I, I recommend, then you're going to need the carpentry here. You know, as we get to the end here, looking at the average gross profit per month, I mean, these aren't ones that really, really stand out to me. But the really interesting thing about this is that this profit right here is on top of the profit that you're already going to be making for your other products. And what I mean by that is you look at the cereal factory right now. So it shows that you're only going to make $1,733. Well, that's on top of everything else. If you were to take and sell your honey, your raisins, your oat, and your corn, you know, you're going to make quite a bit of money just selling those by themselves. But if you want to increase your profits even more over that, then that's when you bring in your cereal factory right here. Then you can make an additional 1,733. That's the way these are set up right here. It's an additional profit on top of what you would have already made by selling the input by itself. I don't think I was very clear in explaining that at the very beginning of the video here, but that's the way this works. Here's the entire sheet with all the data. I know it's kind of small right now, but like I said, jump over to the Discord. You're going to be able to get your own copy of this, be able to make it as big as you need to, to be able to see all of this data. But I wanted to show you the last column here. This is cost of facility. And as you can see, the grain mill is going to cost you $96,000 to be able to own. So if you've got one product coming out of this, say you do your wheat flour, your profits are only going to be $3,800 per month. So it's going to take you quite a few months to even be able to pay for the cost of the facility in the first place. Do I think productions are a bad idea? Absolutely not. I think on flour, you put a lot of different product in there, you're going to be able to magnify your profits. So you can see that if you've got all four of your flowers running at the same time, it's going to be about sixteen and a half thousand dollars you're going to be able to make per month. So that 96000 that actually gets paid for at about a half a year. And y'all may be wondering, well, which one exactly is the most profitable? Well, I've got another chart here for you, and I've done some conditional formatting to show you the ones that don't produce very much every month and the ones that produce really, really awesome every single month. So here it is. As you can see, the number one is going to be the sawmill. Yes, I know logging, but it is the one that shows per the data here that it is the most profitable production facility. Next, you have the great processing unit. You're going to be able to get $9,239 on average out of your raisins and your grape juice is going to be $7,839. So just running that one by itself, because that only needs one input. That is insane. That's $17,000 per month that you're going to be able to get out of that facility. Now, like I mentioned before, the grain mill, if you have all of those running, it's going to be about 16 and a half thousand but that's going to require four different crops being able to go in there all at one time. So it's not a bad one either, but looking at it as an individual level, they're right in the middle. And your greenhouses, I mean, they are just atrocious. They are not that great, unless maybe you have a bunch of them, right? And then that's how you can make some money. I wanted to share this with you guys. Hope you found it useful. If you did, go and give me a thumbs up if you would. If you want to keep up to date on all my future videos here for Farming Simulator 22, consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you do, hit the notification bell too. Have a great day, night, evening, everybody. Till next time, this is Driver53, signing off.